Good morning. How to continue? <laughs> it's repeating yourself all the time. Okay, let's go back to the 1909 diagram. This is, it's, <laughs> I always do that because I think it's essential. It's, it's more or less a, a picture, an image of the human being we, can, we must work with. So, and I remember that Audrey once told me that she had this diagram, she found this diagram, and actually probably some of you will know, when she was trained to become a Waldorf teacher, at that time the, the lectures for the teachers, study of men, or what's it called nowadays, foundations of whatever. Yes, yeah, funny title. But uh, didn't, uh, was not published in English, was not available in English. So they couldn't use that in their trainings. But what was published in type writing, typed out, with, car did you call it carbon paper between? So that these old fashioned things, film thin paper, uh, that were the, the, these 1909 lectures, and then 1910 and 1911. And the structure of that is that in these four lectures of 1909, Steiner gives the, the spiritual background of the physical body. And then in 1910, at the next gathering of the Theosophical Society, he speaks of the soul. So he gave also currents, but differently, to get it more easy. And then the next year, in 1911, he speaks of the, of the spirit. And there you have, it, in German it's called anthroposophy, that's a picture of the human being. Psychosophy, which is the, the soul, and pneumatosophy. Pneuma is the spirit. And when you have these three, actually it's the same basic idea which is behind uh, study of man. But there it's the other way around. Steiner begins with the soul in the first four lectures. Then he goes over to the spirit, and at the end he speaks about the body. But in ascension it's the same. You see, so it was a good choice. And then, when Audrey was asked to work with these students who had learning pro uh, po po uh, difficulties in the 60s, actually it was Norbert Glass, one of the, uh, the, 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 the early medical, uh, uh, one of the early school doctors. He came from Germany and he worked in England in, um, in Gloucester, in Winston School. And he had these children, and th there were then, mostly there were boys, but anyway, the, he, f he, he had them and, and he assessed them as a medical doctor, and he found out that there was nothing wrong. He couldn't find what was wrong. They had a healthy family, they went to kindergarten, they had good teachers, and still they were not able to read and write properly. And during one of the uh, uh, sessions of the gatherings of the Anthroposophical Society. He and Audrey came into uh, conversation about this and then he asked Audrey if she could work with these children and find out what was wrong. Because medically there was nothing wrong. And constitutionally either, also. So that's how Audrey started and then she, she went back to the lectures she got at her training, these 1909 lectures, and from that she started working. And this is what this is all <laughs> what I want to tell you. That she said, this diagram, I worked with it and I walked it every day. You could almost see on my carpet where I went. So when I did this, I went to the right, and that was the for you. I went to the right and that was the current of the physical body. And then I went to the left and that was the etheric. And I went in front and I went backwards. And that is how I did it. So Actually, this is what I started with yesterday, that we, you have a concept, but that's in the thinking. But when you do it repeti repetitively, you repeat it all the time, then it can connect with your feeling life. But what she showed us by just telling this, and what we should do, actually, is that we bring it into our will. Because that's the problem nowadays. We know a lot, and we feel a lot as well. <laughs> But that's not important. The important, the, the important thing is that we get going and do something in the world. We come back to that later. 
Anyway, so that's why I repeat this diagram again. You should know it by heart, almost. Physical body from the left, etheric body from the right, astro body from below, and then the diagonal which is front and back. From the front comes in the sense perception, the imprint from the outer world, which is still body, because it doesn't belong to our soul, it's in the outer world. Makes sense that it's body though, huh? Yeah. Sentient body, SB, if you don't mind. And we are, have interest and go with our will into the outside world to listen and to look and to smell and to feel and so forth. It's in all our senses, this will element. And that is our soul, going into the outside world. So that is sentient soul. And then, of course, this whole, this is, is a three-dimensional structure, a cup. And in that, the spiritual organization can incarnate. And we write ego. But it's not the ego of ego, it, uh, what's it called? Egoity? Egoism? E Sorry? Egocism, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the spiritual. So we could put there ego, but actually you should write in other term, in the other terms, it's spirit, men, life, spirit, and what's the other one? Spirit self. Spirit self. These, through, these three members we, sh we still don't have. We don't have them. They are still under the, under the protection of the higher spiritual beings. What we think our ego is, when we say, oh, it's me, am I? That's, that's our lower ego. That is something that is in our soul that we connect with and that we experience as being an individual. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Could you name again the three? Uh, yeah, I will. Um, let's do the right, right order. So, from spi spirit self is in the middle. No, spirit self, life spirit, and spirit man. Spirit self is the lowest. Spirit self is the lowest. Life spirit is in between, that's I'm sure. Yeah. And then spirit. Mm. You have to know your tables, huh? Yeah. yeah. And actually, when you read these exercises, uh, these uh, lectures, excuse me, and when you work, uh, uh, when you read about the lower senses that are for our bodily um, perception, so the life sense, sense of life, and the balance sense, sense of balance, and the sense of self-movement, that is, on the normal constellations, always in our subconsciousness. And Steiner describes in these 1909 lectures how these higher members up here, so the higher ego, are active in that subconscious, in those subconscious bodily um, senses. So there you see how, sorry? The, light, the senses you mean? Yeah, it's the life sense and the, the sense of self-movement and the sense of balance. No, in 1909 he doesn't speak, he doesn't mention the touch as a separate, um, as a separate sense, but he says the touch is in all the senses, mm -hmm. which it is of course. When you look at something, you touch it, or when you listen to something, it touches. And later, he separates the separate the sense of touch out, and he also relates it to this to the ego sense because he doesn't speak of the ego sense either. In 1909, he doesn't. Scheiner also was on research, so. In, if you take earlier lectures than 1909, 1905 or so, he says, well, we have five senses, that's what outer science says, but actually we have seven, and then he gives two, two cents extra, but there are 12. But he doesn't, really, he doesn't really name them, you see? So, and then in 1909, he gives 10 senses, 10 senses we know, and he continues, and he says, well, there's an extra sense, and that's the sense of imagination. But that's not physical. And the sense of intuition and the sense of inspiration are the way around. Imagination, inspiration, intuition, right. 